What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're talking about Insidious, the Red Door, Insidious 5 here today. The official trailer has dropped for Patrick Wilson's directorial debut, the fifth entry in the Insidious franchise, the very first sequel to the first two Insidious movies since the second movie, which came out in 2013. Wow really going on 10 years and finally the lamberts are back now after viewing this trailer i would say that it has me very excited to see what they have to offer us later this summer now in the trailer or before i get to that in cities the red door is being billed as the final entry in the lambert family saga there is a ign exclusive that was dropped along with the trailer not too long ago where patrick wilson was going over how he was kind of hesitant to take on this project i think is what he was talking about and how he wanted to tell a father-son story which is going to line up with some other things I wanted to share from someone who shared some Insidious 5 details that actually showed up in this trailer a few days prior to the trailer releasing. Now, the trailer itself, or actually before I even get to that, the story itself is set 10 years after the second movie, the original cast are back. Uh, it's the final chapter to the Lambert family's terrifying saga to put their demons to rest once and for all. Josh and college ace Dalton must go deeper into the further than ever before, facing their family's dark past and a host of new and more terrifying or more horrifying terrors that lurk behind the red door. Now, the Insidious 5 trailer started with us recapping everything from 1 and 2 in quick flashes as we, were, as we recall that Dalton and Josh were made to forget their astral experiences during the end of chapter 2. 10 years later, Josh is separated from his family, it seems, and living alone after the death of his mother. However, something is haunting him. We're shown as to be a ghost of an unknown man. Renee suggests that Dalton and Josh reconnect by driving him to college since the death was tough on them both, I assume. We see Dalton get comfy at college. He's an art major and he meets new friends and during an art class is instructed to draw an experience that defined him Dalton retraces his coma experience and not recalling being sick during this though so he's drawing these bizarre grotesque images and we hear tiptoe through the tulips once again in the background which was a nice touch Dalton is starting to connect the dots he's recalling his past Josh and Dalton realize that secrets have been kept from them for a while but he can still feel something following him and his son. Dalton suggests that there's only one way to find out. And of course, we know that will include going into the further. A montage of Insidious 5 quickly appears on screen before Dalton is shown playing with string. Similar to how he was doing this in Insidious 2. How he, how he wanted to talk to his younger brother, but the other end of the string wasn't his younger brother. It was just another entity, of course, that was lurking in their house at that time. Um... Now, Elise does appear briefly in a Randy type Scream 3 video type of thing saying when you awaken the dead, the further you travel, the riskier your journey will become. Now, Dalton is then shown appearing in the further to save his dad at the end of this and the lipstick face demon returns appearing from behind him and the trailer ends with the signature loud blaring sound that accompanies the title card of these Insidious movies. Now, I love how there were a lot of callbacks to the first two movies. And I loved how the trailer did end with the lipstick face demon right behind Dalton, similar to how it was right behind Josh many times during the first movie. And I love how it is kind of showing that there's a role switch going on. So again, a callback. Instead of Josh saving Dalton, Josh, Dalton looks like he's going to be saving Josh this time around for whatever reason. How he ends up getting caught by the lipstick face demon, I don't know. But jumping into what I wanted to talk about from this scooper, who revealed some details on April 13th. Now, we're on April 19th. All these details lined up with this trailer. They, they're they called the V-Scooper. You can find them on Twitter. They say that the grandmother Lorraine has passed away and this triggers something in Josh. He's been away from his family for some years and he's starting to have mental and emotional issues. He focused on addressing that alone. Then strange things begun to take place. Josh is being stalked by a young man's ghost which he saw in his dreams, but now the boundary between dreams and reality is blurred. Dalton's memories were erased for protection, but the recent loss will cause something on Dalton too. Uh, it's a father and son story, which, which again, Patrick Wilson just today in the IGN exclusive revealed that's what his story is. The V Scooper days ago said it's a father and son story. Dalton visits Josh. We see this in the trailer and they spend time together. Dalton's memories start emerging. He is remembering through visions, more drawings he's making in art school and voices he hears. The fire demon is haunting him once again. We literally see the lipstick demon in the trailer. And again, these posts are from days ago. 
He then goes on to say, Elise is back. We'll see flashbacks of her explaining to a group of people about traveling to the further and his dangers, which she does in the trailer. Her spirit will be wandering around watching, warning for what's coming and still giving her help. Josh will start to see her presence. It is very gruesome, darker, and more explicit. There is a lot of body horror, such as a person inside the further twisting, bending, and breaking its body in disturbing ways. Fire Demon will have more presence, and it's way more scarier. Tiptoe Through the Tulips is back, which again, it was, and they think it will be featured in the trailer. It was, all of this was in the trailer. All of this was in the trailer. So the V Scooper, if you're someone who wants to know stuff or if you want to go put your faith in them about any inside information about Insidious 5, you can go ahead and I guess follow them on Twitter. It could be just a case where they just had stuff about the trailer. They might not know anything all too specific about the movie itself, but the trailer to me, I thought was great. I liked how they relied on blending a lot of the new material with flashbacks of the old material and the quick cuts of the stuff we were seeing did look did look interesting. I thought visually that the movie had that dark uh, kind of dark tone and nature to the overall movie or, or the overall movies we've seen in the past. So I loved that. And I can't wait to see the Insidious 5 movie when it drops later this July. If you guys haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification and miss the video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.